Ever wondered how gold goes from raw ore to the shiny, heavy gold bars we admire? What's the real process behind making them in factories? Gold continues to be one of the most coveted precious metals in the world. Its high value, remarkable luster, and long history of symbolizing wealth and power have made it a desirable resource for centuries. But how is gold extracted from the earth and processed into the brilliant, shiny ingots that are highly sought after? Today, we're going to take you on a detailed journey of how gold is found, extracted, refined, and stored securely, including a visit to the largest gold deposit in the United States and the world's largest underground gold vault. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more incredible insights into the world of precious metals and beyond. Let's jump right in. The Origins of Gold Billions of years ago, a massive meteorite shower brought gold to Earth. This metallic treasure was buried deep within the Earth's crust, remaining hidden until the first miners began searching for it during the California Gold Rush in the 19th century. Gold has always been a part of Earth's history, but it wasn't until human intervention that it began to be extracted on a large scale. Gold's journey from being a meteorite fragment to the bars we use in jewelry and financial reserves today is nothing short of fascinating. The California Gold Rush The California Gold Rush, which began in 1848, was one of the most significant events in the history of gold extraction. As word spread about the discovery of gold in California, miners flooded into the region with the hope of striking it rich. But miners weren't concerned with how gold had arrived on Earth or where it came from. They were focused on the potential for unimaginable wealth. Little did they know, the gold they were hunting for was just the tip of the iceberg. Beneath their feet lay vast amounts of gold hidden deep inside quartz veins. These gold veins were created when gold in the form of overheated silica was forced to rise from the depths of the earth and crystallized into quartz. The Demand for Gold To meet the rising global demand for gold, entire mountains were moved and the extraction process became more advanced. But the process of obtaining gold isn't simple. It requires massive machinery tons of rock to be processed, and a significant investment. Gold cannot be extracted until it is found, and the first step in locating it is a crucial one, determining where the gold is buried. Locating Gold Currently, most of the world's gold is found in rock, not as nuggets, but as tiny microscopic particles. These particles are often invisible to the naked eye, making the extraction process more complex and costly. One of the largest gold deposits in the United States is located in the northeastern part of Nevada. However, the methods used to find the gold have significantly changed over time. In the past, prospectors used traditional tools such as pans and sluices to find gold-rich rocks. But today, they use much more advanced technology, including a massive electromagnetic system that functions like a gigantic metal detector. This system can scan the sky and send a signal capable of detecting magnetized sand and other components of gold that lie several hundred meters underground. Although aerial exploration is a highly effective way to narrow down the search for gold deposits, it's also an expensive process. This high-tech exploration has led to new methods of locating gold, but it's still a very risky business. Out of every thousand prospecting efforts, less than one results in a successful find. Drilling for Gold Once a gold vein is located, the next step involves drilling deep into the Earth's surface. Modern drilling machines can reach depths of up to 2 kilometers, far deeper than humanly possible for miners to go without machinery. In Nevada, one of the largest gold mines in the United States is owned by Barrick Gold, the world's largest mining multinational. The mine consists of two major components an open pit mine and an underground mine. The open pit mine is particularly massive with an open area measuring over 80 meters wide and extending down over 450 meters deep. This mine extracts gold-rich limestone every day with six tons of gold-laden rock being transported daily. But before the rock can be processed, it must be blasted. Miners use drill machines to create holes in the rock, then insert ammonium nitrate combined with fuel and explosive compound into these holes. The blast is powerful, using up to 900 tons of ammonium nitrate to pulverize the rock, making it easier to extract the gold. 
crushing the rock. After the explosion, the resulting rock fragments are transported by enormous haul trucks that can carry up to 270 tons of ore in a single load. These haul trucks are some of the largest vehicles in the world. The world's largest shovel, which costs over $20 million, is used to load one ton of ore with just three scoops. A truck arrives empty and leaves with a full load in less than a minute. The next step in the process is the crushing of the ore. The trucks unload their cargo onto a massive conveyor belt, which deposits the material into a gigantic rotating drum. Inside this drum, massive steel balls grind the rock into a fine powder. This process turns the solid rock into sand, which is then mixed with water to form a slurry, a thick mixture of water and rock particles. The slurry is then moved to enormous tanks where it undergoes further processing. Cyanide Leaching In the next stage of gold extraction, cyanide is introduced to the slurry, as it is one of the few chemicals that can dissolve gold effectively. The slurry, which consists of finely crushed rock mixed with water, is combined with a diluted cyanide solution. This solution reacts with the gold, breaking it down and releasing it into the liquid. To isolate the gold from the impurities, small fragments of activated carbon are added to the mixture. The carbon particles have a unique property. They attract and trap the dissolved gold, separating it from the other unwanted materials in the slurry. The gold-laden carbon is then collected, leaving the impurities behind. This process is crucial in extracting gold from low-grade ores as it allows for the recovery of even small amounts of gold that might otherwise be lost. Afterward, the carbon undergoes further treatment to extract the gold from it and refine it into pure metal. Electrolysis Process After the carbon has trapped the gold, the next crucial step is electrolysis. In this phase, an electric current is passed through the gold-bearing solution, which causes the gold to deposit onto the cathode, the negative electrode. This process is called electro-winning, and it is key in separating the gold from any remaining impurities in the solution. The gold particles attracted to the cathode bond and form solid gold, while the impurities are left behind in the liquid. The resulting gold on the cathode is still not pure enough for commercial use, so it must undergo further refining. This electrolysis process significantly reduces the amount of unwanted material, preparing the gold for the next stage in the refining process. The gold obtained through electrolysis is typically in the form of a thick, heavy sludge, which is then sent to a refinery for purification to obtain the highest purity gold possible. Underground Mining In some gold mines, there is gold that cannot be extracted through open pit mining alone. For this, underground mining is used. Underground mining is much more expensive and dangerous, but it is necessary to access deeper reserves of gold. In the northeastern Nevada gold mine, miners travel half a kilometer underground to reach the gold-bearing rock. Once underground, the environment is extremely harsh. Temperatures can reach up to 60 degrees Celsius. To combat the heat, the mine uses one of the world's largest air conditioning systems, ensuring that workers can operate safely. The process used to extract gold underground is similar to that of open pit mining. First, blasting is done to break up the rock. Then, large shovels are used to collect the ore, which is sifted through until the truck is full. The ore is then transported to the surface where it is processed the same way as open pit gold. Sulfide Ore Treatment Gold extracted from underground mines is often encased in a thick, stubborn sulfide crust that prevents easy access to the valuable metal. To release the gold, this crust must be broken through a process that involves extreme heat and pressure. The ore combined with water is placed in a massive chamber where it is heated to a temperature of 224 degrees Celsius. To aid in the breakdown, pure oxygen is introduced into the chamber, increasing the pressure inside. This combination of intense heat and oxygen causes the sulfide crust to crack open, releasing the gold trapped within. The high pressure and temperature are crucial to ensuring the sulfur reacts properly, allowing the gold to be freed from its natural casing. Once the crust is broken and the gold is released, it moves on to the next stage of refinement. 
This process is vital in ensuring that the gold is ready to undergo the purification steps necessary to obtain pure, usable gold for various applications. Smelting and Refining Once the gold is extracted from the ore, it is ready for smelting. This is the final step before the gold is turned into ingots or bars. The ore is heated to around 1,100 degrees Celsius and impurities are removed. The resulting metal is over 90% pure gold. At this stage, the gold is poured into molds, forming ingots that weigh around 25 kilograms each. A single ingot, though, can cost millions of dollars, depending on the current gold market price. To create a single ingot, miners must process up to 8,200 tons of rock. Each ingot is about the size of a brick and worth over a million dollars. This is an immense amount of gold, with over 26 tons of gold extracted annually from just one mine alone, amounting to billions of dollars. The Federal Reserve's Role Once the gold is smelted and refined, it's time to send it to the refinery for further cleaning and polishing. The final step involves marking the ingots with their purity percentage, ensuring that buyers can trust the quality of the metal. After this process, much of the world's gold ends up in the hands of central banks, including the United States Federal Reserve. For over 80 years, armored vehicles have been transporting millions of dollars in gold deposits to and from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. The gold is stored in one of the largest, most secure vaults in the world, located deep beneath the streets of Manhattan. Built in the 1920s, this vault has served as a secure place for storing gold reserves from countries around the globe. The Gold Vault at the Federal Reserve At its peak in 1973, the vault contained over 12,000 tons of gold. The gold, which is mostly in the form of bars, is carefully guarded and protected. Today, much of the gold in the vault came to the United States after World War II as countries sought a safe place to store their gold reserves. Although the amount of gold stored in the vault has decreased over the years, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York's Gold Vault remains the largest monetary gold deposit in the world. The vault contains gold belonging to various governments, central banks, and international organizations. The Vault Security Measures The vault is heavily guarded with multiple layers of security. Every piece of gold stored in the vault is constantly monitored and tracked. Gold shipments arrive and leave via heavily armored trucks escorted by law enforcement. The vault itself is built to withstand even the most extreme physical attacks. But the vault's most notable feature may be the fact that it is built so deep underground that it can survive any natural disaster such as an earthquake. In conclusion, the process of making gold bars in a factory is a complex and intricate journey that involves several stages from mining to the final refinement. Gold is first extracted from mines, either through open pit or underground methods, and then processed to separate it from other materials. The ore is ground into fine particles mixed with chemicals like cyanide to dissolve the gold, and then filtered and purified through processes such as electrolysis. Once the gold reaches a high purity, it is melted down and poured into molds to form solid bars. The bars are then weighed, stamped with identification marks, and sent for final inspection. This process ensures that the gold bars are pure, refined, and ready for use in various industries, whether for investment, jewelry, or industrial applications. The precision and care taken at every step ensure that gold bars meet global standards for quality and value. And that's a wrap on the fascinating journey of how gold bars are made. From the depths of the earth to the precision of factory processes, it's clear just how much effort and technology goes into creating these valuable pieces. If you found this process as intriguing as we did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with anyone else who would be amazed by it. Feel free to leave a comment below with your thoughts or any questions you may have. For more exciting insights into the world of precious metals, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.